Hey, everybody, this is Beast. Welcome back to my channel. I am back on my big old charter bus, and it is a glorious day outside. Why I'm not out there? Well, I'm just making a video for you guys. It's kind of a sad video, but, you know, maybe it might be a little bit of awareness. Maybe a little PSA. I don't know. It. I've been seeing this happen for quite some time, and this is the build-up. So before you before we begin, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And let's if you see something, if you hear something that I talk about during this video, because I'm gonna talk about many key points, drop it in the comment section below. So today we're gonna talk about why nobody wants to help the homeless anymore. Mainly I see it in Seattle, I and I see it in Seattle, I see it in Vancouver, Washington, I see it in in Portland, I see it in uh in Salem, but I believe it's in San Francisco as well and you know a lot of people are asking well why why aren't why is nobody helping the homeless anymore because it's basically it's it's proof of activism gone wrong it's true I gotta fix my selfie stick here it's the it's the result of activism gone wrong I uh, I would say over the course of about Five years. Actually, let's bring it back to about four years. So basically, act activists dive bombed our uh, cities and uh, state capitals and filed motions at the Supreme Court. And they've, they've really lobbied a ton of homeless rights. Uh, anywhere from sitting lie laws and uh, where you can't sit and lay down in, on public sidewalks to uh, you can't pitch a tent downtown, uh, panhandling on public street corners, all these other different things that, you know, evolved with, well, basically being... Homeless. Oh, bum. So, with all this stuff going on, people said, okay, well, now I can pitch a tent downtown. So they pitch a tent downtown. Uh, they had public urination laws, so, well, that was wiped off the books, too. So, basically, they just drop a, they drop a deuce right in front of you. Pull their pants down and pee in the street. I can't count how many times I drove a bus and I've stopped at a bus stop. I'm getting ready to go and the homeless person comes walk and does the Hershey squirts right in front of me. So it's gotten vile. It's gotten dirty. And it's changed how a homeless person reacts, lives in today's society. We used to set, we used to be able to take them to homeless shelters to get them to you know to com commune, socialize with others. Many of them were coming off the streets for thousands of different reasons, you know, divorce, bills, uh, schooling. Uh, they've, they've lost too many family members, mental health. There's thousands of reasons why people become homeless. So, and then you also have the other one, the other group or aspect to say, oh, I don't have to pay any bills. I'm going to become homeless too. So you have the other part. It's probably about like 20% of what our homeless population is today. About 20 to 25% of those people. Of, oh, cool. Look at all these rights. I'm going to be them too. You probably have another small group that's like 10% that are nothing but thieves. They strip cars, they steal stuff, they deal everything right out of their tent, out of their RV, whatever. I don't know the exact figures, but that's just my guesstimate. Now, if you went back into the 80s and 90s, there was always homeless shelters. If you were sleeping on a park bench, the officer would normally wake you up. Or an outreach worker would wake you up and say, you know, we have some services, we can help you. 
You can have a hot meal. You can find a place to put your bag. If you want, if you want to choose this lifestyle. And a lot of people didn't really want to go into the shelter. So they said, well, we have a warming, uh, 24 hour warming shelter if you want to go in and get some sleep. No, no need for any rules, whatever. Good choice. And a lot of them chose either or, and then you had the chronically homeless, which was like 5% of the population. Most of them went into the homeless shelters. They had a warm bed, place to stay, hot, uh, two hot meals, and a place to lay their bag. Now, the most important aspect of this is a place to lay your bag. Because if you carried your bag around with you all day while you were trying to look for work, ain't gonna happen. If you have a place to put your bag, cool beans. I can find work. I can dis disguise myself as not being homeless. Now most of them take pride in being homeless. Look at look at how many jobs that are out there right now. And with people screaming for work, why are there still people on street corners with a sign that have been on those street corners for the last 15 years not having a job? They don't want it. It's plain and simple. So for really, it, it really bothers me that many people that are on the streets right now, they have the capability of getting off the streets, choose not to because they're protected. They're basically protected by ironclad laws that it makes those that really do need help, those that are really in, truly into a mental health crisis, the people all of a sudden make every one of them invisible. It's true. When you're homeless and you're panhandling and you're trying to get by, you become invisible. It's just like how they've treated most public transportation drivers and strip the rights of discipline on their bus, now these bus drivers have become invisible. And it rots and corrodes the mind. And because and because they've done they've given all these rights, it's near impossible to take them away. And they're thinking, well no, it should be real easy to take it away. That's how we gave it to them. No, 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 no. It's just like if you lobbied your state's Congress to, uh, you lobbied your state's Congress to take away the rights to strike for public transportation and, and you win. Which is basically what happened in my job. And they lobbied Congress and they, well, they took away our right to strike. And because our, we took away our right to strike, we lost our voice. And we can't go and lobby because they're not going to take it away. Too many companies, too many corporations that are involved, they could say, shame, shame, shame. Don't touch that law. Now the next big thing that they'd have to do is they now have to campaign and launch a million dollar campaign to get the union's right to strike back. And that is a, that's basically a downhill battle. So now you've taken away the sit and lie laws. You say it's unconstitutional. Well, there's places for them to stay. But they don't want to stay there because, well, they got rules. We don't want rules. We don't want to be outlaws. We want to live in the woods. We want to we want to live in in areas that people would like to uh, recreate. We want to see how we can live as a freeloader off the land in your garbage, taken from stores. Maybe doing burnouts on Friday night. I don't know, but we don't care. 
That's pretty much the way it is. It's, there's so many people out there that are entitled, but they're classified as homeless. But they're really not. They want to live that life so they don't have to be responsible for anything. So this is why more and more people are not helping the homeless and those that are in dire need or in need help or assistance. Uh, I've seen I've seen women that are out there with a sign saying help family is struggling and they have they have a school aged child with them that's not in school. They have a seven year old girl that's in a baby stroller. Don't make any sense. There's all kinds of help to get them out, get them on their feet. Because that's what the activists have done. That's what the activists of the 80s and 90s did. The activists that came in, came through the door between 2010 to 2020 said, "Okay, well we have all that. Now let's now let's get rid of the decency laws, and we won't have any homeless." Guess, guess what? It's Septuple, septuple. It, it's gone through the roof. We were back in, 19, back in 2005, 2006, we were almost to 5% of the population was homeless. We were so close to technically eradicating the problem of homelessness. Activism reversed that trend. Now we have a crisis. So that's why I'm seeing that most people don't want to help the homeless anymore. Because the homeless have become so entitled, they don't want to help. They, we don't need your help. We want to do whatever we want to do. I guess so. That's the way I see it. That's my own opinion. I think that's probably the most neutral opinion you could probably hear on the internet. And it's the truth. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think this can, this can be turned around? Or we just have to wait until it gets worse before it gets better? Let me know. And hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Let your friends and family know and keep on walking.